Hey guys, how are you all doing? Hope you're having a good day. So this is something that uh, someone sent me uh, in an email and it's a magazine from the 80s. They made me both happy and sad at the same time because it's an old, old interview with Carrie Fisher, the late Carrie Fisher, sad enough to say. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff in it and it comes from her point of view just after filming Return of the Jedi or just near the end of it. And I think it's afterwards. And there's some cool insight there on her thoughts as the interviewer asks her stuff about George Lucas selling Star Wars and how he originally had a plan to make nine films. So let's dive into the interview and let's check it out. So big thanks to David for sending this to me. Um, he has obviously a copy of this uh, in his home somewhere. So this is from the 80s. This is pretty cool. So let's read it from the top. Dynamite Talks with Carrie Fisher. Uh, is it the end for Luke and Leia? In the three Star Wars films, Princess Leia roams the galaxies. Will she or her co-stars ever be together again? Dynamite talked together. Dynamite talked with Carrie Fisher, who played Princess Leia, to find out instead of an intergalactic princess, we found a fun to talk with, very down to earth person. Dynamite. Star Wars: The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi were clearly marked as chapter four, five, and six. And George Lucas has said that these films were one third of a nine part series. Now what? Will his stories continue? I swear, I don't know. You'd have to ask George. But based on what he says, or even sometimes what I read that he says, if he could find a way of doing them more inexpensively, he'd do them. Is it only the money? Or is George also just plain tired of the project? You bet he's tired. This stuff is hard to do. Doing the whole series would take someone who didn't have anything else to do, but just make movies all the time. How about letting another person finish the series? I don't know. George is very close to it. And I can't imagine that he would just kind of pass it off to somebody else. Parts 1, 2, and 3 of the Star Wars saga were supposed to be about how the Jedis were formed. And since, by the way, if you guys don't know, Jedi is plural and singular at the same time. And since this happened before Luke, Leia, or Han were even born, you and Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford don't have to worry about being in these films. But what about parts 7, 8, 9? Older Jedis would be training a new generation by then. And if the filming were done in 10 years or so, the same people, 10 years older, could be playing their former parts. Would you sign up for the last three films if they are done? No. I don't know if any of us would do it anymore. These things are sort of done in their own time, you know? And anyway, I'd be about 40, well, mid-30s by then, and I don't think everybody would like that very much. When you started playing Princess Leia, you were about 18. Did you know then that this role would go on for six, seven years? No, you don't think about it that way. When you get married, you don't think, gee, in 25 years, it'll be my 25th anniversary. The work just kept increasing and increasing. It wasn't actually until recently that I said, now it's seven years. During those wonderful, during those seven years, Mark Hamill was in a serious car accident. No one knew if The Empire Strikes Back would have to be canceled or if Mark would be able to continue as Luke Skywalker. How did you feel at that time? When it happened, a friend of mine called and told me. Our first concern was about his well-being, rather than whether our careers were going to go on or not. But he was not in any way harmed. It was mostly his face that was scarred, and George Lucas wrote it into the script. So this is the Wampa scene on Oth. Among the three films you worked in, did you have any? did you have a favorite? Different parts of each film were fun, this time we shot some of it in the United States, but with an all-British crew, that was a lot of fun. It was like summer camp, and also knowing that this was the last of the three, one tended to have a special feeling about it. The audience had a special feeling about Jabba the Hutt. Total reversion. Total revulsion. How did you stomach being so close to such a disgusting character, even if it, was, even if it wasn't real? Well, the guys inside the Jabba weren't... <laughs> Well, the guys inside Jabba were holding my throat so tightly that I didn't really have an opportunity to think that much. Such so interesting. I guess they were really pulling on her, uh, her collar there, her choker. Was that your scariest moment during the filming? No. In the last film, I had to have a device put on my arm for my arm to get shot into, and I was scared of it exploding. Did you have an embarrassing moment? Well, scary and embarrassing moments usually all go together. When the thing on my arm did explode, it didn't hurt. And that surprised me so much that I didn't react to being shot for about five seconds after it had exploded. They filmed it and used a piece of that footage. Very embarrassing footage. 
We all know that Harrison Ford was Indiana Jones in Raiders of the Lost Ark between the Star Wars films. Mark Hamill played Mozart on Broadway in Amadeus, and you starred on Broadway also in Agnes of Gold. Does it bother you when people still think of you as Princess Leia? Not really. It always just... It's always going to be something. People usually remember you as what you did last. The only thing I don't like is when I'm remembered for something I didn't do. You know, like in a conversation when people say, How did you ride those scooters? Then I don't want to answer. This is rumor control. We heard that you... We heard that when you're not working, you read a book every day. True? No, I can. And I do sometimes, but not all the time. What do you do when you're not working? I go on retreats, I go away, which I'll do every so often, and I take lessons. Lessons in what? Piano, exercise, art, watercoloring, cooking. I'll take anything. Tap dancing, anything I don't know how to do. I'd like to learn to do it. What are your plans for your future? I'd like to do more movies. I was just on Broadway, but I hurt my throat doing it. I'm seeing a doctor about that now, and I have to watch my throat. It, sad, it, it saddens me to hear, to read this stuff because, you know, it's just like a young Carrie, she doesn't know where her future's going. And, of course, it's, it's such an untimely uh, death. And it was just, it sucks. You, you never know where life's going to take you. You should always cherish your life as much as you can. Uh, partly because of her throat trouble, our time with Carrie was over all too soon, but there was another reason for ending the interview. Carrie was in on a surprise party that night for a friend, the friend Harrison Ford. Yes, the Star Wars cast may never be together again as Luke, Leia, and Han, but they are all friends in real life. Who knows? Maybe someday they'll all be sitting around and George Lucas will say, hey, let's do another Star Wars chapter, and the Force will be with us again. Suzanne Lord, I think that's her name. So something obviously that sticks out to me here is that even when George was just doing the three and, you know, when he got to Return of the Jedi, the cast even knew that how closely intertwined he was with this story and how he just, they couldn't see him letting it go. Um, as she says, I don't know, George is very close to it and I can't imagine that he would just kind of pass it off to somebody else. And I guess this is why he's he wasn't at the premiere um, for episode eight or nine because he just feels like they didn't, really you know honor his story um he obviously gave them the treatments for you know he, it the other cool part about this is that even the cast knew that he had a plan for nine movies so a lot of people say like oh no he didn't want to do nine he just had one to six that's false because we can even see here in the 80s he had plans for one to nine there's also an interview with mark hamill back in the 80s where um he's talking about playing ben kenobi and he's like, you know, sure, sure enough, George, it would be great to have, you know, work lined up, you know, in the 20th century or 21st century. But, uh, you know, I don't know how, how much I'm going to want to do an old Ben. So that was his plan was to always do nine films. And um, I wish we would have seen that. I wish we would at least, you know, get to know, know the script of it, which would be pretty cool. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. This was a cool little uh, blast from the past here. And uh, have an awesome rest of your day. May the force be with you. See you guys.